All right, it's one o'clock. We have a couple people online. I'm gonna test my ability to use a microphone here. Uh, let's see, we've got Lindsay online. Can you hear me, Lindsay? She thumbed up. Is that a verb, thumbed up? It is now, all right. All right, I'm just gonna give another 30 seconds for the people who are snarfing down their last bites of lunch and on their way in. I think we have plenty of time today. And by the way, um, in case you thought you were in the wrong session, this is what I called it on the agenda, but it seemed to really portray a deficit mindset after the fact. I was looking at this and thinking like, oh, what a negative way to start. So. I'm actually changing the title. So if, you, if you're now dissatisfied with the session you're in, feel free to leave, you won't hurt my feelings. But um, this really is the intention uh, for the time we're gonna spend together today is to talk a little bit about um, where I am situated in the office of the provost within the academic enterprise, um, some of my uh, roles and responsibilities as they've been newly defined, and then get some conversation going with you all about uh, what it is that I should know about what is happening with data in your respective spaces. Um, I'm going to do some Slido polling. I'll talk about that. So if you have a device that you can use to respond to the polls, that's great. If not, yelling out, talking is fine. We'll, we'll have all kinds of opportunities for participation. I'm gonna see if I can hide this a little bit. All right, so this is a quick outline of what we're going to do, talk about our goals, talk about some of my kind of mental model of the different ways that we might work together. Um, ASU is a very complicated place with work happening centrally, work happening in a decentralized fashion. And I just want to kind of talk, kind of get us thinking in terms of some common vocabulary for that. Um, and then most of the, the rest of our time will be about hearing what you have on your minds. So we're going to use Slido. Uh, the event number is up there if you want it. It'll also show up on the screen when we actually get to the polls. So you'll be able to go in uh, at the time. Uh, this level of Slido that I have paid for <laughs> does not allow me to control the privacy settings. So if you put your name in, it will show up in the data that I see later. It won't show up on the screen. Uh, but just know the way to keep yourself anonymous, should, you, should that be important to you, is to just not log in or not provide your name, in which case everything you provide will be anonymous. So um, I would like to start, I'm gonna give you a brief synopsis of my current role and responsibilities. And then I really like to know who's in the room, kind of get a sense. You don't all have to introduce yourselves thoroughly, but if you wanna sort of think about what you would like me to know about where you're coming from, either your role or where you sit in the, the broader organization, that would be really helpful to me. So my current title, I have to take a deep breath for this one because it's really long, is Associate Vice Provost for Academic Enterprise uh, Data Strategy Analysis and, Analysis and Planning. So the academic enterprise part, of course, is part of being part of the Office of the Provost and the way that the uh, ASU Public Enterprise now organizes our work. If you're not familiar with that, we got a whole slide deck from Michael Crow we can send out to you if you haven't seen all the all the different enterprises, uh, but you're living it every day. I suspect you have a good sense of where what that means. Um, my portfolio includes work that I've been doing in the provost office now for about 12 years. Um, I have a couple of teams of analysts that do, uh, as my title says, in, in excruciating detail, analysis, planning. We do a lot of financial aid, policy work and analysis to support our colleagues in the financial aid office. And then we have built recently a, a stack of tools called Actionable Analytics. That is a, a, a partnership with Enterprise Technology, which I will call UTO a few times accidentally today, I'm sure. Um, 
And that portfolio is now expanded as, I'm taking, as I've taken on this associate vice provost role. The portfolio now includes privacy and governance, which is something I've been passionate about and sort of niggling all my colleagues about for a long time, but it's now in my court. And so I need to understand what that means to everyone involved, uh, what we need to be doing in that space. Um, and then institutional analysis, which is a team that sits in the provost office and does all of our official reporting will be reporting to me as of January. So that is really the provost por portfolio of centralized teams. Um, anyone who knows me, and some of you I know we've worked with together for a long time, partnership is kind of the way I roll. Like I, I want to work with people. I want to work with my colleagues who have great skills in helping us advance data at ASU. So um, hopefully that will be part of what we can talk about today is how we can work together. So, Actually, before I open the, the poll, um, anybody willing to share where you're coming from if I don't recognize your face? Um, and maybe even if you think I should recognize you, because it's been a long time since I've seen some of you in person. So what areas are you guys coming from, everybody? Good job, Mike. W.P. Carey. W.P. Carey? Okay. I don't think I know you, but... Nice to meet you, Kylie. Anybody else want to say where you're from? If you want to be incognito, that's okay. Ed Plus, all right. Engineering, Engineering. okay. Oh yes, welcome. So we've got some colleges, some units, some Ed Plus in a world of their own. Liz is here to heckle me because I. Uh, laughed out loud at one point in her in her presentation. <laughs> All right, well, we've got good representation. So let's start with a little uh, engagement here. Go into Slido. And this, uh, this is the room name, the, the poll name, and it should be active at this point. What word or short phrase, I think I limited you to 30 characters here, does data strategy evoke for you? What does that, what does that even mean? The very first word that went up is chaotic. I feel like only at ASU, right? Like we, we live in a unique ecosystem. Deliberate planning, available data sets. Partly I'm reading, I won't be able to read them all, but I'm reading partly so that the recording will have a little bit of uh, texture here. So deliberate thinking, there's some, there's some adjectives in here that are probably as important as the nouns. Systematic. Efficient data use. Universally accessible, that's provocative. Efficient, deliberate, and universal. What story should this data tell? I bet that's what the rest of that was gonna say. Ooh, we must have doubled down on important. More than one, more than one important, it's getting bigger. Again, if anybody either just doesn't wanna participate in the electronic version and just wants to respond verbally to these prompts, feel free. This is supposed to be a conversation. I'm a little bit far away from you further than I would like for facilitating conversation, but uh, feel free to yell out if you disagree with something that's up here on purpose. So there's a lot of intentionality I'm seeing in here. Meetings, really? Meetings? Who put that up there? I'm going to take that to mean conversation, right? Like working through things together, um, which is a very uh, purposeful and valuable uh, reason to have meetings.
I'm using the popcorn rule. So as soon as I don't see movement anymore, we can move on. But I do want to capture as much as you've got on your mind. Communication. What kind of communication? It, a couple of people must have put that up there. I'm just want you don't have to type it in, just yell out. What what does a data strategy communication look like? If you close your eyes and like picture that. Doesn't have to be the person that put that there. Hey Dixon. Yes, close your eyes. No, not until you sit down. Anybody want to? make a suggestion as to what communication might look like. So like sharing out roadmaps or plans, all of these intentions that are articulated here are being shared out, yeah. It is one of our challenges, right? And the more complicated we get as a public enterprise, the, the more challenging the communication gets. So who needs to know what um, I think is, is very important and I will, I will take that to heart. All right. So I just wanted to throw out a few thoughts um, from my perspective on some of the things that I have seen um, and sort of lived out over the last 10 years or so in terms of what I see data strategy really kind of uh, materializing in the institution. So some of that is around privacy and governance, right? So what are our intentions for who will get access to what kinds of data? And a lot of that already exists and we have structures and we have request forms. Um, we, I, think, I feel like I can say this because I've been here long enough that I have to own it. We have not paid as much attention to privacy as we probably need to in the next 10 years. Um, and this is, a, it's a very interesting space, uh, given both the legislative kind of wins and the cultural wins that we are uh, living in. Um, so privacy and governance could be part of a data strategy. Enrichment roadmaps, this is maybe it's just me, but like to me, this idea of kind of what do we curate, what do we uh, prepare so that people are using um, common data sets uh, that have been thoughtfully constructed is the enrichment pillar here. Communities of practice, and maybe this is also part of the communication strategy, communities where we get together and we talk about best use. We talk about the road mapping, you know, what is it we, where do we want to be a year from now, two years from now? Um, to me, that a lot of that happens in the, in the various communities that we cultivate around data, including this conference, right? And then there are, of course, particularities. There are specific projects that we want to do. We, we're building a Calibra data dictionary, right? That's, that's a whole effort that is very particular, but could be part of a data strategy. And so I put there really that, that we want strategically, the, a lot of that seems very tactical. Strategically, we wanna put some parameters around it. We wanna make sure it meets certain bars of excellence, right? We wanna make sure that um, it's sustainable. Like there are a lot of uh, maybe qualitative aspects to what we do in the particulars of our day-to-day -day data work uh, that to me, fall under the strategy umbrella. Anybody think I missed something really big? Shout it out, I don't have a Slido poll. As one of my team members says, Jennifer will wait. I won't force you though, I'm just giving you time. That's a good one, yeah, yeah. So the in, sort of infrastructure, like what are the tools? What are the, yeah, that's a good one. Elizabeth, you're gonna make a note of that, right? Okay, she's helping me. Anything else that jumps out at you that you would want to be a part of a data strategy conversation? All right, now I'm gonna, I was gonna say close your eyes, but the images are important. So that's not gonna work, but 
I, I just want to sort of lay out a metaphor here that we're going to play with a little bit. And I'm, I'm letting the Legos go for a minute. We'll come back to the Legos. And this just worked better for me. So food production, right? So we all know that there are different models for, for growing, cultivating, and producing the food that we eat uh, that is grown from the land. Um, I, when I found this, I was like, oh, Altrix and Tableau. Those are the names of my ox. So, um, so some of the work that we do is very independent. And I'm just gonna give you kind of my lens on this model and what it might look like um, when we think about data work. So if I'm this person and I'm working this field and I've got my tools, like I know every bump, every rut, every furrow, right? I know the, where the rocks are. I know where I've, where I've stacked them. Um, and I know exactly what I want to produce, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cultivate the crops that are gonna serve my local needs, my purposes. In other words, there's a lot of value in working independently. Um, this looks like hard work to me, but <laughs> maybe, there's, maybe there's something to that piece of the metaphor but it is one way of producing uh, food. So here's another way, right? At scale, big farms, big tools, lots of things happening all at once, batch processing. The output is at scale and you know, we can feed the world. Like we have the capacity with this kind of an approach to do bigger things. Um, sometimes we lose track, right? So we end up with something on the grocery store shelf that we don't really know where it came from. Like those of you who study, if there's any, is there anyone who studies food? We do have work happening at ASU. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, because I don't really know anything about this. So <laughs> just using the metaphor. But, but farming at scale creates value because it creates volume. Right, and it, it allows us to spend and make big investments. This may be the Altric server. <laughs> the, the big investments that allow us to produce things at scale. This Redshift, okay, sorry. That's our, our, I don't even know if that's a tractor. My partner would be embarrassed. I think it's a combine, right? Come on, farm. See, right? Okay, making my point. All right, the third way, a third way is to farm in community. So this has some of the attributes of both of the other models. This one in particular seems very small scale community garden, but you all know that a community garden can also be very big, right? It can serve a whole community. It can be a form of substance, substance. Um, but it provides space for people to help each other and it may provide some scale. So I don't know if you've ever dabbled in community gardening, but you show up, you maybe you rent, you rent your plot or you're given a plot and things like fertilizer are available, right? So there's a central uh, piece of work that happens here at the same time that each person is cultivating their little piece. So, I'm not, I didn't lay this out to say like one of these is the best, but I think in our very complicated system of central and decentralized work that's happening, it's, an important, it's an important that we take a moment to think about the pros and cons of what is happening at what level. So that's, that's my hope here. Anybody have any thoughts on on that? Are you like, I don't, I'm not following you at all. Are you talking about in the data? Are you taking it back into data or are you? Of working in this kind of model? Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to answer that or if I want to make you guys think about it. Can, can I just defer? Like, I will give you an example because I've thought of it, but I kind of want to let it emerge. If, okay, thank you. All right, I said that and then this slide has examples, sorry. Okay, so here are some of the kinds of things that I see happening in each of these columns. That doesn't mean it's like 
the epitome of this kind of work. Um, but independent work are people, um, how many of you are building your own reports or dashboards? So you're doing a lot of independent local work. Sometimes I do too. <laughs> um, program evaluation or analysis of a very specific phenomena could be very localized um, data work. And then I, I intentionally put the word stakeholder here because I think a lot of the data community at ASU is working locally because they're really crafting a response to a very particular question. Um, I see Scott nodding. I'm like, <laughs> perhaps he has done some of that. Um, so, so these are independent kinds of projects. Enterprise scale, there's a lot in this column, right? Like these are just my like late night quick examples, but the academic enterprise dashboard landing page is just a web page with a bunch of links to work that all different units have done, right? So that, that to me creates a, a, a scale because it creates visibility across, right? It's like having a, a grocery store and you've got your, your aisles. Um, we, we are building in the provost office some suite of enterprise tools. So in partnership with enterprise technology, we've been building uh, prediction models, campaign builder is a list builder. So there are tools that are built centrally. And then Calibra is an enterprise technology product that obviously is at scale because it's connecting to Redshift. It's trying to create a portal to visibility across all of our enterprise assets. So the community work, a lot of that is meetings at one level, I suppose. Communication, maybe a little better. Um, the SQL repository is an example for me of something that individuals are creating, but they're putting it in a place where other people can use it and make good use of it. What else? What else do you guys see? Think about your work, what, where would it fit? Slack channels, where, where would you see those fitting? Okay, I'm gonna repeat just for the recording. So uh, Scott was saying the Slack channels fit in the community column because they're a place for visibility. What else, what else did I miss? Come on, some of you UTO slash ET people, what's happening in enterprise scale here? Infrastructure, infrastructure yeah. The admissions master list, yeah, very much a, a scale production, right? It's it's made locally, but it is pushed out so that it is um, available, and it's big. All right. Okay. I feel like it's after lunch. You guys need to get some. I I might make you stand up here in a minute, but we'll do one question, and then we'll see what the energy is. Okay. So we're gonna do the, um, the traditional, like, what do you need to start, stop, continue? But I'm gonna do it in, the, in, the, in, this, in, in this order because I feel like we all have things to just pile on, pile on, pile on. So before we ideate about all the great things we could do with data strategy at ASU, I want to start with what do we need to stop? Like, what are some things we could just take off the list and say, we're not gonna do this anymore? And that could be, a project, a thing. Um, it could also just be a mindset or a habit or a, a process. Um, what do we need to let go? And I don't, like I said, I'm not a gardener. This, I have a very hard time letting go of this in my backyard. I'm like, but it might come back <laughs> if I just keep watering it. What needs to go? Starting from scratch because we're different. So these are like kind of mindset uh, habits, right? Lack of collaboration, silos, silos with a small S and a capital S. The idea there will be one magic analytics tool to solve all our problems that, yeah, yeah. I, when we were in that transition process, there was a lot of processing people had to do around, it's not just one tool that's coming, right? It's, 
it's a suite, it's an ecosystem. Data slides without sources. Same thing in 15 places. 15, only 15? Just kidding. I, I do wanna say something. I think there's a theme here of kind of silos and, and not collaborating. Well, I, I have a sensitivity about that. Like I don't like to see that because I feel like it's not good stewardship of our resources. I also want to acknowledge that it happens from places of very well-meaning people just trying to do their jobs, right? So, so I think if we can think of ways, and we'll get to that, right? That we can create sort of proactive, positive frameworks for people to, to be able to get out of that mindset. I do think that's an important part of this journey. Territorial, yeah. And again, just to be generous with the humans involved, right? Like territory is a very human thing. Like we get bristly when people are like, who's not my dog last night with the trigger treaters, right? Like, what, why is there somebody in my life? Um, so I think just being gracious with each other and saying like, okay, this, I would like to collaborate with you on this. And I know this, you know, may feel a certain way to you. I think that could uh, be a healthy habit for us. Multiple departments creating the same finished products. And when do we find out? Afterwards, right? <laughs> Unintentional creation of dashboards. All right, this is gonna be fun for me to download later. Thank you for, for all your thoughtfulness. Competition causes great ideas. Yeah, it's a really good point. I'll repeat it for the recording. Um, Dixon was pointing out that it's fun to see the different results that come out of some of the duplicated efforts or very similar efforts um, and that we would lose something if we didn't have, if we didn't allow that to, to flourish, right? All right. All right, now we're gonna think about what do we need to water? So what are some of the good things that are already in place, already part of our culture, already part of the infrastructure, whatever it may be, that you want to, you know, sort of water and cultivate, that you want to grow, that you want to make sure survive any kind of uh, change that might be underway? Everybody loves the Slack channels. Couldn't have been timed any better really too, right? Like, I don't know how that happened, but that was magical with the pandemic. Maybe. Just it. Maybe. You're saying Slack caused the pandemic? Is that what you're saying? I heard now it's on the recording. <laughs> I won't say who said it. Generous attitude, ET's generous attitude providing support to users. Yep, UTO is pretty good too. Enterprise solutions. Data training resources like data dictionaries, dashboards. We do have, a, have an incredible array of really powerful tools and, um, and assets out there. Data groups like RWUG. Do you know RWUG went dormant for like five years about, must have been like 17 years ago. So there was a user group way, 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 way back before my time and then like, we had to resurrect it. So it's good to know it's important. Abundant resources and trainings, training, table and column descriptions in Calibra. Where's Josh? Is he, I, he's not here. Okay, we'll just tell him someone else is a Calibra advocate. Anybody wanna just yell out what, what you're thinking? What are the best things? that need to survive? Nobody's put in the people, like 
to me, this is one of the things that we have that is very powerful that we often don't think about when we're looking at our assets um, are the actual individual people and their skills, their talents, their energy, their thoughtfulness, uh, you name it. Um, we have a very diverse, interesting, committed group of people doing data work at ASU. Yeah, yeah, the Slack channels and the people and the people and the, the Slack channels wouldn't be much if there weren't people using them. So, all right, I'm gonna move on. And then this is the like ideation phase. What is it that maybe doesn't exist at all? Maybe think back to the data strategy kind of columns that we talked about. What are the habits, beliefs, structures, ideas, plans? projects, uh, groups, meetings? What is it that we need to start doing for the academic enterprise data strategy? And yes, I do know those are not seeds, but they're so cute because they're starting to grow. I think Mike mentioned this morning, um, talking to people at other institutions, often this is where I get my best like, oh my gosh, we had never even thought of that, right? So if you're feeling kind of stuck, like there's a lot, there's a lot of really good work happening in data and higher ed. Um, and we're, even though we're doing very quality work, we are not tackling everything and we can't tackle everything. So. Data governance reboot, a way to connect with others. I, didn't read the rest of that, but I'm going to go back and look later. Who might be maybe in the same boat? Looking for the same thing. Right? Thank you. <laughs> Interunit data projects. Training for data use in your role. Does anybody want to? If you're not, if you don't mind identifying with that answer, what kinds of roles maybe we we should be thinking about? Yeah, okay, let me paraphrase. I'll synthesize, tell me if I don't do it justice. So the idea is to get in front of uh, people who maybe aren't the data experts, but give them some coaching on here are some of the ways you might use data in your specific role. Um, as opposed to, and I think this is an important part of what you, you said, as opposed to waiting for them to ask the question that can be answered with the data, right? It's almost like jeopardy. Like, here's the answer. What might this stimulate in your, in, from your position in your process? Yeah, I like that. Regular collaboration opportunities, comprehensive training. We are doing a lot more in, in, in-house in the provost office thinking about um, onboarding and training. Like, like so many other groups, right? My, <laughs> My unit, um, the two teams that, that report up through me started with just me, right? Like I was in the provost office and then I did some things and then I did, and then I hired one more person and then we did things together. And so we had not until fairly recently taken a pause and said, wait a second, like we got to be able to scale the training, the onboarding, the orientation. And I know enterprise technology folks have done a great job recently with the same kind of step back and look at all the tools and all the, like, how do you, how do you get started in the analytics space? It, it is a, I think it's a maturation moment for us um, to be thinking, wait a second, we gotta be more intentional about some of this. Um, we were just talking at lunch about how do you teach an analyst to make sure they're checking their data? Like something, those of us who have done this for a long time, um, just do, right? And you, you forget how much teaching and training and how many mistakes you had to make to, to end up there. Ooh, some really interesting ideas here. Data sessions for individual departments to help with finishing and utilizing data relevant. It, it feels similar to this sort of, like I'm picturing like almost like, um, like little coaching sessions, right? Like, um, I love that idea. 
an easier way to see which dashboards and information already exists, especially for people new to their roles. Yay. We're going to work on that, right? Looking at my analytics friends. I think this concept of roles has come up a couple different times and is interesting that, that as data teams, we could think strategically about what is it that different functions within the university need um, so that we're giving a little bit more kind of pre-curated kind of shape to what we're providing. All right. I love how these, these got longer. Um, the stop doing were like one word. Uh, silos, silos. All right. So what's, what's emerging for you at this moment? And by the way, I do have one last Slido that won't be shared on the screen. So if there's something you're like, ah, what I really wanted to say was, um, that'll be coming up here in a minute. Um, you can also always email me. The last slide will have my email address on it. And like I said, this is like this is this is what I'm up to. This is my work for the next. I don't know. Don't tell the provost. Maybe five years. No. <laughs> um, five years because at that point we'll have a completely new game to play, right? Like it'll be a new it'll be a new landscape. Um, but we we are going to work out a five year data strategy plan. And we're going to figure out how to share it and how to communicate it and how to make sure that we're checking in to see that it's working for people in all kinds of different roles. So what else did you hear? Did you see what surprised you? Any reactions? That raises the actual question. The questions really come in the nitty gritty, right? Like, how do you, how do you make that happen? I agree. Just go back to that iterated nature of ASU with this community, but it's loose connective tissue, which mm -hmm. makes it hard to really mm -hmm. trigger on these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that loose connectivity is an important piece of our design, right? That this is not accidental, <laughs> that, that we are the way we are. Um, and, and if we can design for that, right? So that things are opt in, so that things are allowing space for all different kinds of models of work. Uh, I do, it's harder to do it that way. Like it'd be easier to just say, this is what we're doing. This, this, these are the rules. Um, so what I'm hearing is that you're indexing all the reporting of our analytics groups and all the different- videos. That's right, yeah, no, no more. Okay. There's, there will only be one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, like we, we live in a complex world. We live, we function in a very complex organization. So the answers to things like what should our data strategy look like are not gonna be simple. If you have a simple answer, please email me. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, some of the roles and responsibilities that you think might be the best, I'm not gonna pick on, the person in the jacket over there, but um, sorry, I don't know your name, Kylie. Kylie. Um, I'm not gonna pick on Kylie, but um, so I, I, we work a lot in the student success, success space. So I think a lot about advisors, coaches, department chairs, working with Scott on, recently on some of his rankings. I know there are people with responsibilities sort of for some of our um, UN development goals, right? What are some of the other roles where we need to make a connection between our data strategy and these roles and responsibilities? And it really doesn't have to be Kylie. I was, I'm asking the whole group. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I'm gonna, I'm gonna not do it complete justice, but I'll say um, there's a sense that we're not getting as much specific feedback on the reports that are on the analytics site. And that maybe it's somehow connected to kind of not being sure what's out there. Is that yeah, fair? Uh, so the next stage, yeah. Yeah, you gave me an idea though, because people, we could use the usage data from the analytics site to get at least a short list of these are the roles that are popping up the most often, right? Like, I don't, I have a very, 
um, specific lens from my place in the organization on who would would benefit from data. But the people that are out there, even if they're not getting exactly what they want, but they're out there, that, that might give us a, a way into here are some of the other roles that we may be forgetting about when we're designing our, our strategy. Yes. Right. Right. So the the roles that are not there at all would be a red flag, right? Like if there are people that, uh, if there are roles in the institution um, that are not showing up at all, that should raise, raise a question. Yeah, for sure. Anything else? Anything else? Um, I just left this blank because I wanted to kind of get, get give you some space to, to reflect. Um, which of these space, you don't have to answer this out loud, this isn't a poll, um, but which space do you thrive in? I think there's an important sort of aspect of knowing ourselves and knowing where we do our best work, that we don't all have to operate in all of these spaces. And some of that is probably kind of, you've probably already kind of got your role based on where you work best. Um, but it may be it may be interesting to reflect on this and and if you are really good at community work but you're not in a role that requires that like there's a lot of opportunities and we'll try to make sure that there are more and more um, if you're an independent operator um, you know do good work create fabulous exemplars so that when we're you know, when we're out there combing for what's the best dash, who's who's figured out the best way to visualize retention? I still have not seen that nut get cracked, frankly. I'm like, I want a powerful picture. So if that's where you operate, like embrace it, lean in, like be the best independent contributor you can be um, and know that these other kinds of work are also happening. All right. Whoops, sorry, I think that's already active. I hope I didn't break it by going to the next slide. Um, I'm not gonna show the results here. I just wanted to give you a chance um, if there's something that I said that you disagree with, or if you uh, want to volunteer for a big new data strategy project, um, you can ping me, put it in here and I'll get with you. Um, and you can always, always email me, so. My name is Jennifer Wilkin, JJ Wilkin at ASU.edu. And uh, I look forward to working more together. By the way, this is my way of blending the garden metaphor and the Legos. So I won't tell you how much time I spent last night looking for, <laughs> actually it's very, very easy because Unsplash, you type Lego and garden and boom. There it is. So it, it, it was not, it did not just magically pop out of the words in my deck yet. All right, so let's build things together. Let's plant things. Let's make, make good data strategy together. Thanks for coming today.